Have you ever looked up the definition of bossy like on Google? I have not. It's a really fascinating experience. You guys should try this. So when you look up the word bossy, first of all, there's two panels. On one side is the definition and it says... F bossy is fond of giving people orders, domineering, usually referring to women. Like fond domineering. of giving people, domineering, right? Mind you, when you look up boss, it's like the person who's in charge. Oh, right, like really that why is doing but so that, much heavy that, lifting. That, that why just adds oh. a little, just adds a little, <laughs> little like domineering, loving it. And then, so when you look it up, there's a definition on the left. And then on the right is Khalees music was, video bossy. Bro, I was going to ask. I was actually going to ask. So yeah. that's really funny. Which is really like a fascinating dichotomy because in that song, she's like, I'm bossy. I'm the, what is she? I'm the girl they love to hate. I'm the chick that's raising steaks. Really different Here we energies. Are. Here right? we are. And I want to talk about that one. That bossy. I want to talk about that. You know, they say women shouldn't be bossy. We're out here reclaiming that word. What's so wrong with being the boss? I'm Tara Reed, the CEO of a multi-million dollar ed tech business. And I'm Katie Gaddy Tossan, better known as Money with Katie on the internet. At our core, we're driven by a shared ambition to build our own mini empires. Welcome to Bossy. Okay, can we talk about how we decided to do this show? Because I originally met you on Twitter. I mean, because I slid in your DMs. Did I slide in your DMs? Um, I you slid in my DMs. I think you slid in my DMs, but I... So you initially posted something. Mm -hmm. You posted on Twitter that you were going to do the show. Can we pull I it up? Yeah, yeah. I have the initial Let tweet. me read it to you, okay. and then you react in real time. Okay. What did you say initially? Ahem. We're cooking up another show. All about side hustles, entrepreneurship, and ways to increase your income. I'm looking for an amazing female co-host. Who should it be? Yeah. And then someone else tagged you and yeah. said Tara Reed has great camera presence and business sense. And Tara said... Oh, this sounds like me. I said, wait, this sounds fun AF. Katie, DM me. Okay, so I you invited you, me into your DMs. I told DMs. you to slide into my DMs. And then it so, went down. And then it went down. That's how we started this show. And it actually is really interesting because I've had so many opportunities come my way from Twitter. Right, like putting myself out there. Like I have been on a board of a fifty million dollar year company. I have done speaking engagements, like over ten thousand people. I've got mentors. Just Twitter. You're I'm just a little magnet. You're a little cloud well, magnet. Mm, I don't know about all that. I think I'm like putting. <laughs> I like this. Like, a lot of times, people like get awards for things, and like all this stuff comes to them. And in reality, they put their hat in the ring. Mm. Like I, someone mentioned me, but I put my hat in the ring. I remember actually distinctly wondering, like, should I reply? Should I not? Like. I don't even know if she's going to see it. And like got over that to like, oh, I don't know, doubt. And was like, oh, let me just message. Like, you know what the fun. funniest part is now in retrospect is that the sh the tweet literally says it's going to be about side hustles. And I'm like, great, we're going to make a podcast about side hustles. And then the second you got involved, you're like, so I was thinking, I don't think it should be about side hustles because I don't think we're playing small. Are you playing small? And I'm like, and also, oh. neither of us spend that no. much time on side hustles. Yeah. We both have full businesses. But I you do. hit me with that Tara spin so fast, though. It was like what we the had Tara spin. The Tara spin. Okay, so for the uninitiated, y'all will probably witness this in real time, honestly, at some point. But Tara is the master of being in a conversation or in a meeting. And just subtly reorienting the conversation in the direction that she wants it to go. To the point where you don't actually, as like the participant in the conversation, realize it's happening. She's just subtly implanting <laughs> her ideas in your head. So you're like, oh, I just thought of this. She's like, oh, wow, Can great. you give an example of this? I feel like this is like how to win friends and influence oh the meeting. Oh my God, dude, it happens so often. I'm like, let me scroll through my Rolodex. There was one incident where we had a really big group of people and sometimes, you know, when you're in a meeting and there's just like a zillion cooks in the kitchen, yeah, it's a little bit many. hard to keep things on track. And you just kind of piped up and you're like, so it sounds like this is happening. I, you've got what you need, right? I think we're good. Well, because I, I hate meetings where we just like keep going. Everybody's got what they need, but they keep going. So you're yes. like, so let me know how, what's the most aggressive ask we can make here? And I'm oh that's like, one you of my favorite that's one of my favorite guard all the times okay so so that's Tara Spin you Tara Spinned your way into this show you Tara Spinned your way into the set and Tara Spinned the the freaking the concept of the show all in one fell swoop Hilarious. so here we are to talk about 
building businesses and entrepreneurship and, and it all started big. from a tweet it all and started a DM. From a tweet. well should we tell everyone what the show is gonna be called yeah okay so we went back and forth with a couple different names mm-hmm. and you initially proposed what side chicks side chicks. which was really my husband proposing side chicks because he's like that would be hilarious and i liked side chicks for like 24 hours and then i <laughs> sat on it and also i think like my boyfriend hyped me up and he was like you're not a side chick so you're really the main event what are you talking about and i was like you know what you're right. So in the background, yeah. basically, it was our two significant others yeah. <laughs> duking it out <laughs> over the name. So you proposed. So I proposed boss mode, mm-hmm. which you immediately. I was I, like, boss mode was like, I that's can't. how I feel when I'm like ready to go. When I'm ready to go into the meeting and like tear a spin it up. Like I'm like, all right, but let's I do hear boss, boss mode. mode and I picture like the black and yellow transformer. Like it was giving it, you mas- it gives too masculine. Me too masculine. And so we kind of landed in the middle though, mm-hmm. very nicely. I was boss. laying in bed one night and I was thinking about boss mode and I was like, boss mode. But I'm like, why is that not resonant with me? And then I thought about how boss. as a little kid, I used to get called bossy all the time. Yeah. And I was like, if you are outspoken, it's like it's that double standard of assertive, like a, a man yeah. is assertive, a woman is aggressive, etc. And I was like, bossy would just be so fun because we can really own it and be like, okay. Yeah. yeah, reclaim a word that people get sort of insulted. Women get insulted by. Have you ever looked up the definition of bossy like on Google? I have not. It's a really fascinating experience. You guys should try this. So when you look up the word bossy, first of all, there's two panels. Hmm. You know, like the definition is like on one side. And then you know how they have like the multimedia, like mu- like other things. Yeah. So on one side is the definition and it says... F- bossy is fond of giving people orders, domineering, usually referring to women. Like fond domineering. of giving people, domineering, right? Mind you, when you look up boss, it's like the person who's in charge. Oh, right? like really that why is doing but so that, much heavy that, lifting. That, that why just adds oh. a little, just adds a little, <laughs> little like domineering, loving it. And then, so when you look it up, there's a definition on the left. And then on the right is Khalees music was, video bossy. Bro, I was going to ask. I was actually going to ask. So yeah. that's really funny. Which is really like a fascinating dichotomy because in that song, she's like, I'm bossy. I'm the, what is she? I'm the girl they love to hate. I'm the chick that's raising steaks. Really different Here we energies. Are. Here right? we are. And I want to talk about that one, that bossy. I want to talk about that. So should we say we should introduce ourselves more formally? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because on Twitter, you like, can you give the context of like you were kind of yeah. already doing something and yeah. you posted this tweet. What was the context there? So I already have a podcast, yeah. The Money with Katie Show, yes. and I, I make content about personal finance. Yeah. And it really wasn't until I was 18 to 24 months into that that I started to notice, particularly with the cost of living, inflation, kind of this vibe shift where yeah. it kind of became apparent to me and I think to others on our team that there are a lot of people out there who don't really need more financial literacy. Yeah. They need m- more ways to make money. They need yeah. more money. And many of them have entrepreneurial instincts. Some of them are already running businesses. Yeah. And I think that there's an, an interesting thing that happens like when you're kind of running your own thing and I'm sure you would identify with this, there's really no playbook. There's no rule. Like you no, are truly figuring it, it out as you go. Yeah. And so anytime I wanted to listen to women talk about that, I was like, I'd go to the p- podcast charts and it was just all dudes, dudes, mad dudes, on pale, male, stale, podcast. man. And so I was like, that would be really interesting because I want to hear women that are doing this. I want to yeah. learn. And I want to learn from you. I mean, that was why I was Same. excited to work with you because I was like, well, you're doing really cool stuff. So anyway, yeah. that's kind of my background. Yeah. And I think it's to me one of the most empowering elements that you can give someone financially is teaching them how you level up yeah and how you can create more income for yourself yeah and the fact that it's I mean and we'll I'm sure we'll get into this but I think you a lot of the time kind of wait for permission or you feel Mm -hmm. as though someone else has to give that to you yeah and I think there's like a really interesting unlock that happens when you're like oh wait you mean I can just Go out there and make a website and yeah. DM brands and like I I could just do this myself like oh 
okay. And realizing yeah. that that and limit your own bossy, that ceiling is not real, I think was a really interesting moment for me. And so I would love, yeah. I'm just excited. So you posted this tweet and then someone who I think followed both of us replied to the mm-hmm. tweet. So I run a ed tech business and we teach people how to build their own apps and businesses around that and do that without knowing how to code. So my company is called Apps Without Code. Yep. And one of the things that like I really love creating content around and helping people around is like finding ways to not get stuck at a roadblock. Mm, so for me, yeah. like not knowing how to code, not having like $20,000, $50,000 to like hire someone to build my first app ideas. Like those were all roadblocks that I was hitting. And I love a like zig when everyone else is zagging. <laughs> like what you're not going to do is find me stuck. Like that's one thing that like I'm just not about. And so I I really like what we're talking about and kind of where we landed with this yeah. concept of bossy and really kind of like owning that, whatever that looks like for mm-hmm. you. And I think like what's going to be really fun to play with here in our conversations is the fact that you and I are really similar, but we're also really different. Mm-hmm. And we have totally different approaches to like what being bossy looks like for us. We have totally different work styles. We have totally different sort of thoughts on business models. And like, we're just going to like talk about that and hang out. And we, I think people are going to have That's a fun time listening. That's the other thing that I'm so interested to see how we both kind of change and grow yeah. through making this show. And yeah. I think that it's going to be an interesting kind of like chronicling of the changes. Cause I've already, I feel like learned things from you just in the process of Same. developing this. But I think that what's, what's most, what I'm most excited about yeah. is kind of the behind the scenes honesty about yeah. what it's really like and when things are challenging yeah. and and to your point about moving obstacles realizing that most of the obstacles are up here and it's yeah. like a it's either a perception thing or it's a perspective thing or it's a, I thought it was going to be this way and it's actually not thing but most of the time you're in your own way and most of the time at least that's yeah. been true for me and so well, I'm just pumped thing about- to be to be real about that and to talk through those things because I think it can be very isolating when it looks on the surface like everything's going really well. Yeah. And like maybe it's not. Or maybe you're like, I am truly flying by the seat of my face. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. No, I think that's real. I think that's like real one of the really great things about having like an entrepreneur buddy. Yeah. I know like when I started my first business, I my friend Thomas, like we would text each other. And mainly like at that stage, it was like, I'm gonna quit. Like I Mm. threw this. This is a terrible idea. What phase was that in? First year or so. Okay. I pretty much wanted to quit like the whole throughout because it's hard. How long have you been doing this? I've been an entrepreneur full time for nine years. Because you were at Microsoft first, right? Yeah, yeah. You I came worked from at, Microsoft? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I worked at big tech companies. I worked at Google, Foursquare, and Microsoft. And in 2014, I had sort of an idea for my own business. And there was, I actually, again on Twitter, I saw on Twitter this guy had rented out Kickstarter's old office. He had left Union Square mm, Ventures, the okay. big PC firm. He rented out Kickstarter's old office. And he was running this side project accelerator program so like speaking of we were talking about like should we talk about side projects should we talk about the big thing right for me I spent a pretty small amount of time running a side project yeah like how long my first business was a side project for probably like four months three (laughs) months before I was full-time so what happened was I did this program the side project accelerator program I was living in Seattle at the time because I was working at Microsoft and the I got how old were you who 20 something early, early 20s, 20s. Yeah, yeah early okay. 20s so like yeah truly that's when you're like little bambi in the forest for sure like, bambi in the wobbly forest, legs for sure. but like thought i knew everything yeah there's the powerful delusion delusion definitely it, entrepreneurship takes a little delusion okay so, so yeah. you're in seattle so i'm in seattle i get into this program the program's in new york and i'm like shoot i didn't really like think the plan through here <laughs> And so I didn't think this through. She I says, really didn't from think the it other through. side of the country. I didn't think it through. It just like my job was so like irritating and annoying. There's so much bureaucracy. I wanted to like red get tape. stuff done. There's so much red tape that I was like so desperate for a creative outlet that like I was just applying to programs, I think. Mm-hmm. And so I got into this program and I talked to my partner at the time and she was like, what's the purpose of having this cushy tech job if you can't fly to New York every week to do the program? Mm. And I was like, good point. 
true. So I got those, like, you know, when you get, like, a credit card from an airline, they give you, like, a bunch of miles yes. that you can use. Oh, so, boy, like, do I. Okay, you know this, right? So I got airline credit cards and, like, flew that whole summer to New York every week. So, like, I flew on Monday. This was before COVID, but tech companies work from home was, like, still a, like, thing you could do, like, every now and then. So I'd work from home on Monday. Did your boss have any idea? No. I don't think so. No. I was just, I like, working from... Other people were working from home. I didn't say what I was doing. I used doing to, like, go into work home. and be like, follow money with Katie. Follow money with Katie. Follow money with Katie. In the office? Oh, yeah. My... The CMO... Oh, like, you were working, like, on a side I worked business. at Southwest, and the CMO of the marketing department printed out one of my blog posts and left it on my desk and wrote, great blog post, really enjoyed this. Oh, my and I was gosh. Like, I love that. That's good. I actually think, like, people like that, that you're working yeah. on cool things. I think, yeah. in general, people admire hire people who are working on something cool and interesting mm-hmm. and even, like even if it's like a side project that's cool so I flew back and forth to New York to do this program I learned a ton about operating businesses and how long was it the program was like over the summer right okay but by so the like months, time the pro- yeah a couple months but by the time the program was over Microsoft had laid off 80,000 people and so I lost my job Dude, in the middle 80,000 80, people is a lot of people how many people do they have to I be able to know, lay off 80 lot. that's There's a lot of people a lot of redundant jobs though yeah. Because, you know, like, there's a like lot a of blow companies with a lot of blow. Yeah. So I was kind of like, all right, I'm going to give myself like a couple months to like see if I can like make this work. I had like a severance package. So I was like, OK, like this is the time limit. And if I can make this work, great. And if not, then I got to go back to getting a job. And I haven't had a job since. <sighs> oh, my God. Yeah. So wait, can I tell you the polar opposite story? Yes. Yes. Let me hit you with the er- come to the other end of the spectrum. Okay, what's the other side? Okay, so I was working at Southwest. This was mid-2020. Yeah. So, like, I had been working there for four years, I think, at this point. It was the only job I had had full-time. And I really liked it. I loved that company, loved working there, but it was the middle of a pandemic, and it was like, word on the street is, this thing is going to be around for a while. Mm. Airline travel was just in the oh, you're toilet. At Southwest. I was at an pandemic. airline. So, like, the vibe was very much, they were like, we will pay you to leave. Like, we don't want to wow. have to do furloughs. They had a voluntary separation package that was like three or six months of salary yeah. where they were just like, get another job and go somewhere else to they gave the offer to the whole company and we're just like anyone can take this so I was like well I guess I should start looking for another job interesting so I start applying to jobs to write for nerd wallet for their travel rewards so when you're like see how credit cards will give you points I'm like boy let me tell you about some points great fit okay great fit so I'm like really into this I had just started money with Katie as like a, a fun thing on the side and had been doing it for a little while and so I go in through this nerd wallet interview process and I get all the way to the end. And I know it's between me and another person. Yeah. Now, at the time... This is a whole separate job you're applying for at this whole point. separate job. Okay, so like, and my manager okay. knew... I mean, like, I was very open about it with them. Like, all right, I'm going to see if I can yeah. take VSP. So, long story short, it's down to me and this other person. I know that I, at the time I made $60,000. Yeah. The salary was $80,000. Yeah. That was more money than I could fathom. You're like, like hey, I, I got the upgrade. I was like set my sights on 80k like I can't even imagine making that much money yeah they picked the other person yeah they said you don't have the domain experience so did you get a chip on your shoulder I said crack the knuckles (gasps) I'll show you some fucking domain experience it was chip on my shoulder it was it was basically a spite blog for a little bit where I said money with Katie was a spite blog I said I'm gonna make more than $80,000 a year doing this on my own watch me this is not abnormal though like there's so many entrepreneurs it's like the chip on your shoulder business like watch me watch me like that's a really common energy I was so upset I was so upset I felt so rejected and so I continued to work at Southwest until I think the following year yeah and then ended up switching companies but the whole time was just building money with Katie on the side. So if we fast forward to now, mm-hmm. right, and you running your business now, I'm curious kind of like how you operate the business and like how you work as an entrepreneur and a CEO now. So like what would you yeah. say is like your work style? Oh my gosh, it's evolved so much. Yeah. So 
I think what I've finally gotten to now, yeah. and, and back then as a foil for this, it was like frenetic. I worked, I had multiple jobs at yeah. one point. I was like a full-time contractor, full-time W-2, building money with Katie, and a cycle instructor. So I was yeah. probably doing like 80 hours a week. The most. The and most. I know you also recently kind of have switched it was up like your schedule I was too. context switching mommy. But yes. So Even now. Even now. And, and this is the crazy thing is I feel like I... When I sold money with Katie, I was like, oh my God, I'm going from four jobs to one. I'm going to have so much time on my hands. I'm just going to be so like work-life balance. And then what do you know? It's like, I just filled all of yeah. that time with one thing. Work-life balance doesn't just happen on its own. Like you got to maintain that doesn't. shit. So what I've gotten to now, the point that I'm at now is that I really try to have a couple days a week where yeah. I don't schedule anything. Yeah. And it's just like, there are just several things that need to get done this week. And I, I really try to have those like long uninterrupted periods because I'm yeah. writing the book, making this show, yeah. making money with Katie's show. We have a lot of projects going on. Yeah. But for a while, I had like the perfect little organized, like every Yeah, when we met, yeah. I think you like sent me, you were screenshotting something. I was else, trying to show I you my like, your calendar. <laughs> your, you were trying to show me your availability for a meeting, and there was no availability because every hour was blocked out. And Color I was coded. so stressed out looking at <laughs> your calendar. So, like, I know this has shifted a little yeah. bit, but like, talk to me about, because like that wasn't that long ago, the like blocking. You know what changed structure. it, honestly? What? Is you said you work two days a week. I said, yeah. homegirl does what? <laughs> huh? Two days a week? Monday, like, Thursday are my days. And so that inspired me to think yeah. about it. Because I was like, I feel like I'm I'm overdoing it. Mm. And I had the perfect, like, if you followed, like, every productivity hustle hustle bro think boy yeah. on Twitter, all the hacks. I was like, they would have seen my calendar. I'm in like, chef's kiss. But it was literally <laughs> just. How to optimize your calendar to fit more yeah, in. Yeah, it was it was structured context which yeah yeah that's yeah what it, it was. was like get up in the morning go to soul cycle here's 30 minutes where you're gonna do this and then here's 15 where you're gonna work on this and so now it's if like i could get that to work for me it would be like i would do it if it worked for me miserable. but i think Don't like i can't like i can't get that to work for me i think i would probably there's two components to my work style i think it's like work smart not hard mm -hmm. is definitely like a motto and then i think there's also like a go with the flow give me the monday component. thursday thing how did that okay. come about so that's part of the work smart not hard strategy <laughs> um and really about just like optimizing my time so okay i have meetings on mondays and thursdays on mondays i mainly have internal meetings so i have like an all hands team meeting with my team i have one-on-ones internal with that on internal mondays. that i manage okay. thursday i have mainly external meetings although i do have like one internal recurring meeting right so mainly that's the split and then the rest of the time like it kind of depends on what season i'm in not like winter spring summer fall but just like what's going on in life because sometimes i'm watching reality tv and watching the kardashians on those other days and sometimes i'm like working on a project that like i'm revved up about and like we came up with a cool new ai prompt and i'm just like going to town and testing it and like going nuts about it so with the monday thursday thing do yeah. you find what is the benefit of having all internal on one day and all external on another is it just kind of a mindset thing well, or mainly you're kind it's of like my calendly which is for external people literally only has thursday available okay and if you cannot make this thursday well we better talk next thursday like there's <laughs> literally just like it's like a row of days that are See, available this is all why, thursdays okay tara gives me a hard time because we've had a ton of meetings yeah. for the last several months we have and when a meeting is over i just leave because this I'm is like, my favorite bossy move that you this do. Is, this is why it cracks. I'm like that to me, that's the same vibe. Being like, here's a link. It is. That's if you can't make a Thursday work, I guess I'll see you four yes. Thursdays from now. It's like the same energy as yes. being like, the time is up. Your version of this is like at the end of the meeting, you're like, guys, I've got to go. Just want to let everyone know that I have to go and you cannot afford any more of my time. You don't say that part, but that's what you really mean. And I think maybe mine is like, this is the day I will talk to you as much as you want this day, but I will not talk to you tomorrow. You know so what? it's our but own maybe, kind of structure. Yeah, I think because... But it it's depends. still boundaries. Listen, it depends because if it's going long because things are just flowing and we're yeah. making a lot of progress, to me that's very different than something that's going long because everyone came in unprepared. <laughs> then I'm like, <laughs> call me when there's an agenda, right? Yeah, like, I just, true. I think that's that's the difference. But 
maybe I'll be better about it now that uh no that's good that's good that and I have two days a week I do, think, I do think that sometimes there's the meeting after the meeting or the meeting before the meeting and like sometimes those are useful so so definitely like I work Mondays and Thursdays mm-hmm. that's sort of part of my work smart and art hard but also like I'm really trying to restructure my business right now I'm working with my executive coach on this to like really optimize for being in my zone of genius as much as possible what is your zone of genius Okay, I think there are some things, like, and actually, like, as I get more into, like, my 30s, too, like, this is, like, I'm getting much more cozy in my own, like, skin around She it. says in her over-the-knee <laughs> silver boots, I'm just so comfortable in my own skin. Yes, because literally the version of me, like, a couple months ago would never have worn this. Mm. Right. So so yeah, like I think like as I get more comfortable, I'm more ex- self-expressive oh, for sure. Yeah. But like I think things that I like, I like doing deals. <laughs> Partnership deals. I like innovating on product. Like right now I'm spending a lot of time on AI and I love it. And I like doing and producing performances, content, but like I'll call it broadly mm. performances. I'm like a musical theater kid. So like performances as a whole. We right. should. I feel like theater kid energy is a new level we could unlock yes. together. We'll explore You're that the later in the season. I didn't yeah. know that. You think you think this <gasps> girl was an athlete? Hell no. I was I mean, drama club. not the club. only two options. I was drama club. I love it. Okay, Well, we great. can bring some theater kids. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to just restructure to mainly do that. And actually, like, I posted this tweet, like, in 2019. It's actually probably, like, my most popular tweet where it said, like, my job as a CEO is, like, one, to make sure we don't run out of money. Two, to make sure everyone st- understands their job and is empowered mm, to do yes, it. Yes, yeah. And three, to like slowly remove myself as a critical part of the organization. Okay. And like everything else is a distraction. That's what I wrote in 2019. Have I you done that? I've done some of that. Okay. I have a different view on it, though, because hmm. my friend Joel, who's the CEO of Buffer, um, commented on that tweet. And he said, agreed. And also, you can make the role whatever you want it to be. And what you feel it's best to be. And I think in 2019, I had like a very linear view of what a CEO looked like and what that meant. And some of the things about being like creative and free, like that wasn't Mm. really what I was thinking of as CEO. I had like a very different like view of CEO. Right. So I think that's kind of helping me frame this. And I'm working with my coach on this on really how to to get more um, everything else that is not those things off of my plate. Okay. So. You're saying that your zone of genius or the thing, is it that you think that if you spend, I'm assuming you think if you spend more time on those things that fall into that category of like flow state, this is where I feel like I I am uniquely qualified to provide this and no one else can do it and less time on the things where it's like, well, someone else could. Yeah. Less times like forcing myself to get through a thing. Oh, I'm not even good at this, but I got like force myself to this project. Somebody else should do that. But on the, right. so if you're only doing Monday, Thursdays, mm-hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, yeah. you mentioned Kardashians, but are you, I assume you're like working Sometimes on I'm things working on, on things. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm resting because the best creative ideas come in space. Like okay. your best creative ideas come when you're bored and you're like, True. oh, wait, I could do that. They come on the walk. They come in the shower and those sorts of things. So I'm, I'm structuring that off time to be in my zone of genius of coming up with a new idea. That's what I have to deprogram is that I very much like have that puritanical idea of hard work. <laughs> yeah. It's like they they really nailed that Catholic guilt into uh, me. Where you're like, I uh, have to work really hard. For this. Yeah. It's a, it's like, I'm valuable if I'm working. And if mm. I'm not doing something, I'm not valuable. And I think that, but to your point, it's an incredibly counterintuitive way to approach what is essentially just creative work. Yeah. If you're like just data entering a spreadsheet, Sure, working all the time might be the most productive thing, but like that's not yeah. th- that's not the nature of what either of us do and I would yeah. imagine what most of our audience does. And so I think that there's a there's also just a limited list of tasks that will move the needle. Yeah. That will like actually be needle movers. So at the beginning of the week I try to write down Is this like, a Sunday thing? 
No, on Sunday, what I do yeah, actually Sunday? is I write out questions. Now I write out questions to my leadership team. So like my VP of growth, VP of operations, we have sort of a running document in Notion and we each go through and like we'll write questions for each other and things to think about. Like, hey, what do you think about this opportunity? Have we done this? What are the numbers on that? Can you get me these numbers? I'm thinking about how it might influence our strategy. I'm sure and your team kinda... loves that on Sundays. Well, I <laughs> I actually think some of them from a leadership perspective are thinking about it on Sunday anyway, too. And the yeah. reality is that we are a small business. We're entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like we're thinking, a lot of the people that I hire are entrepreneurial, right? When you work at a small team, you're entrepreneurial. So yeah, like they're thinking about it. I don't feel bad about that. Yeah. I know a lot of people do like, oh. Well, like, I think that's the, but so also, I'm like, also a Sunday slacker because that's yeah. where I'm. I don't expect I, them to respond on Sunday. Yeah, I also will do that, and I usually feel bad about it. Sometimes I'll schedule oh. the messages for Monday, but then I'm like, Ugh, whatever, it's fine. Like I think in Notion, there's like not they're like getting a bunch of notifications about it. True. Okay, okay. so so Sunday, Sunday is you're asking them questions, so you're trying to get yep. them on the same page. Or, like, I, I'm trying to get them to tell me what page I should be on. And I think that's Ooh. actually a big shift, okay. right? I want them to drive and actually spend a lot of this year restructuring my team um, to have people who can drive themselves. Can you tell us and a little bit more about the team before we move on? I can. Okay, great. So, in general, there's, like, two main parts, two or three main parts of the organization. There's growth, there's operations, and there's product. I kind of lead product right now. Okay. Eventually, I'm going to put someone else in to lead product, but those are sort of the three, and then they okay. each have their own teams. Who's on the team? How many How many people work for you right yeah, now? Yeah. Okay, so there are 15 people on my team. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. 15? That's a lot of people. Bro. I had to really, like, structure it so that I was not responsible for managing all of those people, though. Like oh, tr so how many do you directly manage? Two. Mainly it's leadership team. And I kind of have moved some things around because I used to manage a lot more people and I had cognitive overload. Oh, and yeah. So frankly, like I hadn't put in place the right structure to have the right people to tell me where we were going. I was like the main dependent on telling everybody else where we were going. And I had to be like, wait a minute. There was a, a time where my ego was fine with having a company where I tell everyone what to do. We are no longer there. I've outgrown that. My ego does not need that anymore. I, I don't care anymore. You tell me what we should be doing. And so I kind of have been working with my coach really like this last year to do a whole retwist of this. So I manage like VP of growth, VP of operations, and one person who's on product team because I'm kind of leading that product team. Okay, so we were talking about ego death, like what happens as your business, as you need different things from your business. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if you look at your business now, do you feel like there are things that you, where, places where you're doing all of the doing, first of all? Oh, yeah. And do you feel like you need that? Like you're getting something from <sighs> See, that. See, this being is honest. the ego death piece of it. Um, I think the problem that I'm facing, and I guess to back up a step, I think... Have you ever heard that phrase, what got you here won't get you there? Yes. I very much feel like that is the season, <laughs> the hashtag season uh, that season. I'm in, which is that what got us to a million dollars a year yeah. is like Katie on the on the content hamster wheel just yeah. churning Grinding out it out. takes. Yeah. And that worked, question mark. Uh, but I don't Super. think that that scales to... Five million a year or ten million. Yeah. I don't know that that's a sustainable business model on which to build a skyscraper. Yeah, like, I don't know that that's a very strong foundation. And so I think the the difficult part is relinquishing control a yeah. little bit and being like, okay, well, if you want this to grow, you need to trust that other people can create these things at the same with the same perspective and the same caliber of energy and like the same quality and like they're going to bring the same things to it that you will or that that you know they can I almost have, help with some of the like background like the things that fuel the end product I have a hard question oh god do you feel like you trust the people that you work with cuz your team you, how many people do you work with they're in the room with us right now. I'm looking at them right now. Okay, so we're, we're going to talk like, about y'all. Never mind. Then. No, I no, I'm they were going to talk about y'all. Like, like, let sorry, me look but you I really want to hear, like, because sometimes the trust part is not that they're not trustworthy. It's your shit. It's my shit. 
because I do trust them. But I think the problem is that in my mind right now, it's still like, but it's my show. These ideas should come from me. Yeah. Like if it's not coming from me, it's going to feel different and people are going to know. Like, Mm. and I don't think that that's true, actually, because we've done things before that were not my pitches and it went well. And you know what I mean? What are some things that you find yourself doing that you can like kind of like come out of body and like see yourself and be like, oh, I didn't need to do that thing. Can Hmm. you think of anything where that's where that happens? That's a good question. Sometimes I think some of the research I could probably hand to someone else yeah. and be like, I have this curiosity mm-hmm. or I'm looking for anecdotes that prove this point yeah. or help me figure out how to structure this. Like here's a word vomit of like all these different disparate ideas. Can you help me turn this into something that's actually cohesive? Things like So that. what happens instead, like you have- I do it. <laughs> does anybody see it in word vomit stage? Um, no, usually by the time it goes into editing, it it's pretty cleaned up. <laughs> like sometimes it will go into editing though. And Hannah will be like, what is this? And I'm yeah. like, good question. I don't know. And so then, it, then it'll get moved around a lot, but, but that's only one piece of the pie. Right. And I think that there's, there's so much that we do as part of yeah. so, so many of these things I still touch, like the product, the, the show, yeah. the social, the, what there's would, just a lot. What would you, like, if we kind of go into the future of, like, what you would like this to look like, mm. let's say you have, like, the resources that you want, right? How would you structure your team? Because this is actually how I came with my structure. Oh, I was actually, like, who would be my, like, dream kind of like team executives? State. Dream team executives and dream team structure. So maybe not necessarily who it would be, but, like, what would be kind of a structure? structure that would feel really good for you oh man I feel like that's part of what I'm trying to figure out right now is okay. what do I actually need and want to spend my time on and I yeah. think that the flow state comes most when I'm just writing yeah and like there but then there are other things that we do where I'm like I gotta really psych myself up to work on it and I think that those are the things that gotta go they gotta go because that's those are the things too that like are not as good as they could be because yeah. I'm bringing a very different energy to them that's the thing about sort of like being like I gotta do all the things like you're working on things this is for anyone like you end up working on things that is not your zone of genius and it ends up not even being that good mm-hmm. you like couldn't let go of it mm-hmm. yeah I think I, I also am interested to hear more about head of growth because I think that I think having someone fully focused on growth yeah. would be a game changer. Because right yeah. now, it's like our team is so small. There's only three of us, me included, full time. Yep. And so everyone is kind of wearing a lot of hats and trying to make a lot of different things happen. But it's if everyone's just kind of in the weeds, like working on the things, we could yeah. be making sure it's happening. There's not so much. And I don't know if this should be me, frankly, but like, yeah. there's not someone ab- above all of that being like, okay, this channel is stagnating a little bit. Or like, we have so much opportunity to blow this up even bigger. Or yeah. half of our revenue is coming from this one thing that is very low lift. Let's turn, like, there's leverage yeah. there. Let's turn that up. And I think that that's the thing that I think it also doesn't have to be zero to 100 that you just go like hire a bunch of people onto your team because that also also is like risky. It's expensive. Yeah. Like most people can't do that. I couldn't do that. That wasn't an option. I generally bring people on and we do a project. Hmm. OK, that's how we start. Like, let's do a project. 1099 together. situation. Let's yeah, not only 1099, but like 30 days. Gotcha. Okay. Let's do a 30 day project and feel out working with each other. But in those 30 days, I'm really vocal about what's working and not working for me. I ask them to be really vocal about what's like, because I think like once getting good at handing things off, because we're talking about work styles and I think you have a work style that's centered in work smart, not hard, that you kind of have to be able to give things to other people for them to to work on. their own zone of genius Mm -hmm. and a project really allows you to feel that out and if it didn't work out then you just find another person to do a project with you can kind of do continuous projects so I bring people on as have you found have you found good full-time hires that way yeah like has everyone on your team now did they come into the fold that way 
a hundred percent in some capacity. Okay. Either Third during day. the interview, project. either during the interview process, we have to do a project anyway. So like that's part of the interview. Like I don't want to just be on an interview. We just talk. Yeah. Like that doesn't tell me anything. Like let's make something together. Let's do a thing. Sometimes I even oh, do paid, paid case studies even sometimes like I'll pay you to do the work, but like I want to see what it looks like to do something or it's like an actual, even sometimes we do that whole process and then we do like a project together. Okay. Interesting. Cause that's, well, it's funny too that you bring up like that you have to get people that you trust that you put in their yes. zone of genius where like everyone is kind of operating on the thing that they're obsessed with. Well, that's what I'm like looking at as we do the project. Yeah. 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 And, but that also I imagine gives you the space. So I, yeah. I found this when I was, so I'm trying to retrain myself to like see that as a strength Yeah. and not see. See what is a strength? See being like having free time question mark oh. has a strength that's so interesting because you're such a creative and like so much of what creatives need is like some free time and yeah space unstructured to come up with yeah i know and so i found out isaac newton invented calculus <laughs> on a one-year sabbatical yeah from cambridge not surprised albert einstein took a break from his job as a patent clerk and like basically formed the basis of his theory of relativity. Yeah. Um, Marie Curie did the same thing, took time off, was like studying independently, did research that like won a Nobel prize. Yep. So I'm trying to just inundate myself with these examples of like, Katie, your perception of like what it takes to be successful and the fact that you need to do it all. And if you're not constantly working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is going to fall apart. Yeah. I'm trying to like. When you look at friend group, do you feel like people that you're around work a lot? No. No. Interesting. No. Do that's you have like a pride and like, I'm the one that does? Dude, maybe. Maybe that's the thing. I saw I you post on Instagram because you had gotten sick and you were like, this is like a whole identity crisis because like, I'm not a, a sniffly. I'm not a sniffly girly. I'm going to get up early girly. <laughs> I'm not a get up early girly. It's true. I'm a get up early girly. I slept all the way in. No alarm, girly. (laughs) Last night you go, do you want to meet in the lobby and hang out at 9.30? I go, 9.30? I'm going to bed. What are you talking about? 9.30? You're like, I'm already in bed. I'm in bed. Yeah, that So I think that it's an identity thing too. And again, it's like, that's what I mean when I say you get, the obstacles are both imagined and internal most yeah. of the time. It's like you, you need, I need someone to look at what I'm doing and be like, mm, but what if you just, are you sure it needs to be done that way? Do like, you need someone to look at what you're doing though? Or do you already know? I think, I, I think I need someone to look like, oh, wait, you're working with an executive coach. Right? Yeah. Same but he principle. mainly tells me stuff that I know I just haven't been doing, and he just puts but a little fire into my There's value in that, right? There's, 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 there's so is. value in that to, to make you take it seriously and to focus on it. Yeah, no, that's true. That's so, true. I don't know. I think that the—I want to hear more about the executive coach, but I think that yeah. there's something— his name is Eamon. He's amazing. He took AppSumo. Do you know AppSumo, the company? He took him mm. from $3 million to $80 million. I really wanted to work with someone who— could help me with the like not getting started phase, but like the stuff that happens after that as you scale. And there's totally different things that you need to do in like that first phase and the next phase. Oh, I I definitely like the first phase better. You like starting. I like starting stuff. So mainly like what I'm doing now is trying to organize stuff so that I am not spending as much of my time as like traditional CEO. And I like, I have this image in my head of when I used to work at, at Google, like Larry Page sort of like was at the time sort of like CEO and doing all the businessy traditional CEO stuff. And Sergey's like riding around with his scooter, like starting like <laughs> Google cycle. Fiber and like cool stuff. Like I want my Sergey life. I want mm. to play and to create. And I need to sort of structure my company such that there's enough sort of structure without me. It's sort of running and has all these processes without me such that I can play. And that's really what I'm working on now. Do you have a plan to get there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you like you've got you're just now executing. Yeah, and also I think I'm le- I'm not like waiting until I get there because I think I'm going to be miserable if I'm like I'm going to wait to be in my zone of genius to get there. Delayed gratification. I'm like in general not into delayed gratification. I'm like let let's like experience life and like have fun now. So I definitely am like leaning a lot more into it now, and I'm leaning more into like being in my flow. So for example, one of the ways I lean into flow is like at the beginning of the week, I'll make a list of the things that are going to move the needle. Like 
like actually change things in the business. And I'll mark if it's like an administrative kind mm. of an analytical task, like an A task or a C task. Administrative, oh, analytical, or creative. Okay. And so what I do is like I don't block in exactly what I need to do at exact days. I just feel like today, am I in an analytical, like I, sometimes I'm in a mood where I, I don't want, I can't come up with any creative ideas right now. I just want to like get some stuff done, clear the emails, like just yes, get some stuff yeah. done. Power That's through. a vibe that like I ride that wave. And sometimes I'm in a wave where I cannot get that kind of stuff done at all to save my life. And I have like all kinds of creative ideas and my mind's going. And so I try to work on the right task at the right time to just like be in flow as opposed to forcing myself. With the needle moving concept. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Talk me through that. Yeah. Okay. So I actually got some of this from my coach because in when we do our quarterly planning, what we do is we like make a long list of things that we think would like help us get to goals. Mm. So the goals are already there. And usually they're like two year goals. Cause like, to be oh. honest, I think if you're looking further than that, like at a startup phase, like I have no idea what's going to happen. Two years two being years. the furthest away. I think two years, at least for me, is like the furthest that I'm looking. Um, so we have those goals, but then like each quarter we write down like what are the things that would like help get us there. And in one column, so like it's in like a spreadsheet kind of thing. So in one column, we write a number for what the impact would be if we did that on the business. Mm. And there's a legend, right? For the growth team and the operations team, they have different kinds of like legends. And who manages this? Do you manage this? Right now, it's just like a notion document. When we get to the end of the Everyone's quarter, everybody kinda... knows like it's time for And okay. I've already been thinking about it a little bit and I kind of like host a little ceremony for us to do it. Oh, nice. Um, and so you write the impact score, one out of five, how much would this impact? And the ease score, one out of five, how much would, how easy is this to do, right? And then there's sort of like a weighted score. So I think what I'm thinking about for my week, I'm thinking about high impact stuff that would move the needle. High impact. Okay. So you're, are you literally looking at that document to be like, let me sort this column by impact and pick something? No. Or you kind of like, no. Already. No, in general, I'm kind of gutting into on a weekly basis, like okay. what needs to happen. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Can I tell you my hot take about Notion? Yes. Have you ever seen the midwit meme? No. Okay. So it has the like the derpy guy with like, <laughs> it's like offensive, but it's like this derpy cartoon guy uh -huh. and then it's like the bell curve. And then there's like the Jedi at the other end. And then in the middle, there's like the like stressed out midwit guy. And it's like the derpy guy and the Jedi are both like Apple notes. And it's the dude in the middle who's like Apple notes. Notion, Evernote, like has all these like complex note taking softwares. Yeah. See, to me, Notion is like, you know, there's like, it's in some myth where they like open the box and the box is like, ah, it just like screams at you. Yeah. I'm like, I want to close that. I There's too much going on there. I'm very, very... I get that. I think Simple with my technology. Google Docs, though, are just like mad disjointed. Like no one can ever find the Google Doc. Ever. No one ever knows where the Google Doc is. So we just make a new Google Doc. We just redo <laughs> the work all over again. Like that this regularly happens. And I like that Notion like links to all of the pages and there's like clear company directory. So there's your pro Notion. I, I'm not anti Google Docs, but I have to acknowledge that like people consistently can't find the Google Doc. Y'all know you can't find the Google Doc. <laughs> okay. Let's play a game. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we should give each other three different companies. Okay. So okay. you're going to name three companies. Okay. Two of them are companies that you would actually want to run. Like you're like, okay. oh yeah, that'd be sick. Like snap my fingers in another like, world. I'm the CEO of that company. I am the CEO of that company. Okay. I would want to run that company. The third one is not. This is like two truths or a lie. Bingo. Okay. Okay. Got it. And then we have to guess okay. which is which. And, but we have to tell each other why too. Cause I think that, I okay. think that that would be funny. Okay. All right. Got it. Two companies that I, three companies I would love to be the CEO of, but two are true and one's a lie. Yeah. Okay. Great. Who's going first? I'll go first. Okay. I'll tell you mine first. Okay. Mine are the financial diet. Okay. Hermes. Vogue. Oh, geez. Okay. All right. Um, financial diet is interesting because like when I talk to entrepreneurs, they never really would want to like re redo the same <laughs> thing you got like so yeah. much trauma from your own business and you're like anything else. So there might be like trauma response PTSD. here. Yeah. There might be some like PTSD here. Okay. okay. So that's on my, my hot list for, for lie. 
Um, I think Hermes is is true. Why? I think you like the luxury brand of it all. If I like look at your shoes, like I know that this is a thing that you like. Um, so I think you would have fun running that kind of okay. brand. So I'm going to go with that being your truth. Okay. And the last one Vogue. was... Vogue. I know you like Vogue, Tara. I like Vogue, but this is not me. This is you. That's right. <laughs> okay, okay. Um... Although I think like Vogue has some maybe like superficial stuff that like may not be your jam, I think the actual business of like getting advertisers mm -hmm. in and brand partnerships is very partnershipy. So I'm gonna go with your lie being the financial diet. The first one, just from like a trauma response guess perspective. Am I right? Okay, so perhaps that was unfair. Yeah, did I get it right? Because no. Oh. <laughs> I won't prematurely per celebrate. Perhaps that was unfair because you don't, you didn't, you re weren't really aware of the financial. Okay, what was diet. your lie? My lie was Vogue. Okay. Although right, I do I'll love Anna Wintour. <laughs> I'm a big fan yes, of. The, I just glasses. read her biography. She like wears the same pair of Manolos every day and eats the same little like blueberry. Mo She's just like chic that granny. And I, I love her. But um, <laughs> no. So I'll, I'll start with my lie. Thing. Okay. I think the reason I wouldn't want to run Vogue is because I think that, le like, they're tastemakers. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they like, are. They kind of decide what's in, what's out, what's Correct. cool, what's not. And I think that would just be exhausting, frankly. And I think that oh. having to, re like, having to make those sorts of calls as the business figurehead of a very creative business with a lot of conflicting personalities and points of view mm -hmm. I think it would be fun for like three weeks and then I think I'd be like oh my god I don't want to talk about this like I don't want to hear it anymore because people are like having conflicting views about what should move forward and what's yeah, and it's, good it's or just not. I think you'd have to tr like have so much a trust in the people mm. I think it'd be hard not to play favorites I think it'd be hard not to have your own bias seep in of That's like definitely things, what happens at companies I like know that. and it would suck I think that'd be oh, terrible because okay. then like your yeah, I would not want something that's so subjective, mm, I think. You're like, I want, like, a clear answer. And there's not a clear answer with yes, a business like Yes, and, like, that. Maybe, maybe it does come down the to clear putting the right where the advertisers are at. That's yeah, and that's, that's another, like, slippery slope, yeah. even in that. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, all right. That, that was the lie. like, moral challenge. Moral quandary. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, I can see that. So... Hermes, that was correct. Yeah. I think running a brand that has exclusivity as its value prop would be incredibly fun, if only because you are not worried about volume. It's like mm -hmm. you're actually yeah, yeah. worried about the opposite. And even though I think there's a little like bit you of- You can't get this bag. <laughs> there's a little bit of the Vogue effect from the standpoint of like being a tastemaker. But I think it's been, it's like so Lindy that- it, it's just been around for so, so long. And I heard yeah. this story the other day that really stuck with me where they made this bag that was made of canvas. I think it was made of canvas. Hermes did. Okay. And too many people bought it. Like, they were like, oh my God. Well, <laughs> they they like, made that The many. CEO like went to the board and was like, this bag is way too popular. We need to way keep too it many, Way too many people are okay. carrying this bag. We need to stop making it because we yeah. do not want this many people to have Hermes. Yeah. Which I'm like, what an interesting business challenge that would be. Mm, how do you get fewest people? Yes. Fewer people, higher price points. Yes. I think that'd yeah. be interesting. Okay. Finally, financial fun. diet. So the the reason this was unfair is because if you knew the company and knew the founder, you would know that this is like a thing that they do where they have a very different approach. Okay. Business, which is, is not, let me see how much we can grow and how big we can grow and how fast and whatever. Let's, you know, we're not trying to get acquired. We're just trying to maintain. And sometimes mm -hmm. I really fantasize about that a little bit, if I'm being honest. Don't where we all? They do like two million or three million a year. They like have good. four day work weeks and they're like very content with that and very outspoken about how growth is not the goal. Mm. And I'm like, that sounds nice. <laughs> like, okay, that would be fun. It. So I'm like, yeah, I think in, in another world that would be fun. It's giving like lifestyle business lifestyle energy business. that you like. Okay. Yeah. All right. What are yours? Okay. So three companies I'd allegedly love to be the CEO of. Two are true. One's a lie. Correct. Okay. Amazon. Oh my god. 
open AI. Oh, okay. Miss Chat GPT. Google. Okay. Oh. I had to give you all tech companies to throw you off. Bro, that's so hard. I think... Why is it hard? Because they're all tech? Because they're all... I could just... I could make a case for all of them. And I could also make, like, a bear case for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think... You have to think about me, too. I know. I think I'm going (sighs) to... I'm going to guess Amazon is the lie. Tell me why. Because... (laughs) (laughs) Because I think running Amazon would be freaking terrible. It's huge. It's like all logistics. You are constantly getting lambasted in the media for just being a terrible person. Yeah. Like, I think I think that would just be no fun at all. Yeah. And I think what, like 50% of their income is retail and 50% of the revenue is, is cloud. So like you're still, I don't know. I think that would be a nightmare. I think. And you know what I hate? <laughs> what do you hate? Low margins. Yes, low you hate low model. margins. I hate I knew there was something about that. I'm like, there, I do a like lot this. of volume. You just gotta hustle and deliver those it's packages. Anti Hermes. <laughs> you gotta deliver those packages, and like, I do not like that business model. Yeah, and deliver those packages. Find a way to affordably deliver the packages, but also not have people hate you in the media. 100. Like percent you're trying to get the business model to work. Yeah, I think tough. open AI's to me seems like you would love that because you love ChatGPT. I do, love and Chat I think GPT. it's so on the cutting edge, and you like the cutting edge so i would say that's that's another one and then what was the third one google google oh yeah you just told me you want your creative moment so i think you would want it as long as you could be like the sergey not the larry you could be on your little segue around the campus scootering around with my crazy idea being and like, that's exactly right. autonomous okay, good. driving yeah good good guess that was right was that right that was yes. right yes you got it yeah i win you win you won good okay well I think that's all we have for this week. Anything you want to say to the people before we go? No, although I would love if folks want to participate in the conversation with us about work styles. If you're willing to share how you would describe yes. your work style, tell us and maybe we'll be inspired by what you say and we'll give each other ideas about work styles. Are you a get up early girly? Make that the subject line or mm-hmm. in the comment. The I'm first line in the sleep in girly. You're a sleep in girly. Yeah. All right. That is all for this week's episode of Bossy. Our first episode ever, in fact. And I think, yeah. think that went Let us know what you think send us an email leave us a comment and we will see you right here same time same place next week tell the people goodbye thanks for hanging with us bye